all about trying to maintain some composure. It's going to be tight. Uruguay kick us off, knocked down by McCubbin, but Tonga had it back, then lost it. And McCubbin feeds it away to Diego Ardao, the Uruguayan captain. Vinales looking on the wide outside, instead it was Amasha. Ardao, McCubbin, missing out Liechtenstein, it's a nice ball to Amasha. And now Basso, Bautista Basso, what a stretch, what a score! What a start for Uruguay! 88 seconds on the clock, and Uruguay lay down a big playoff marker. Well, no better way to settle the nerves than to get on the score sheet early. Vasso, what a finish. Takes on two Tongan defenders, and the big reach, you can see eyes on the line. They just caught the Tongan D a little bit narrow, put the ball through the hands. Kick from Guillermo Liechtenstein just wide, but Bautista Basso, top carrier on the series. Close to 200 of them he's made over the course of the year. And he has drawn first blood for Los Terros of Uruguay. How will Tonga respond? Respond by losing another restart. And that can be also crucial as a source of possession. Ardao, plenty of blue jerseys away to the left. Baltazar Amasha is one of them. Tonga fighting hard and winning the penalty. Good work over ball by Laulea Mau. And now Tonga Tea has Tonga's first possession of this London 2023 event. Bakalani. On to Tupo, the captain. Eight tries in the two Challenger Series events in Stellenbosch this year. Now perhaps an opportunity as they skirt up the blind side Sorry, through Pakalani, a 33-year-old, one of the most experienced members of the Sea Eagles team. And Uruguay through Vinales, pull for the ball back. Turn over. And then it's stolen again. Tupo has it. Tupo knocks it on. Who wants this match ball? Uruguay do now. Liechtenstein. To Amasha, and they pick up from Liechtenstein, Vinales, burrowing forward. Liechtenstein, jinx left, then right, takes a sore one, a really sore one, a clash of heads. Between Liechtenstein and Atiliani Pakalani. Both players thankfully swiftly back to their feet. Well, a bit some short fingernails, and maybe a few more grey hairs over the course of today as people track Can I just, uh, this playoff competition. Piece? Yep, AJ, we'll just have a look at yeah, just going to have play. a look at that collision. AJ Jacobs presiding here. It's Liechtenstein with the step into Bakalani. AJ, I have a decision. Yes, Jimmy. There is foul play against 10 red. Yep. There's contact to the head, though mitigation due to the player uh, ducking. Thank you, uh, Jimmy. So that's 10. It's a yellow card against 10 red. Correct. Number 10. This is a big deal. Direct for head Tonga. contact. There's a mitigation because the player is like. That's the mitigation for that. One of their most seasoned campaigners dismissed for two minutes. Yellow card. For Atieli Bakalani. Tonga now defending the penalty with six players. Time on. They're going to have to work really hard now. Not only down to six, but without their most experienced player. And they haven't really got, it, got themselves into this game yet, Tonga, and they've got some big defensive work to do now. Uruguay score close to half of their tries off set piece possession. Bakalani kicking his heels. On a plastic seat on the touchline. Uruguay looking to wedge themselves in the driving seat on the pitch. Liechtenstein goes wide. It's a run in for Baltazar Amasha. And Amasha makes no mistake. They make really good use of the extra man. Drawing in the Tongan defenders. Tonga forced to narrow up. And just missing that extra guy on the edge. 
Uruguay, Uruguay got two ahead. Baltazar Amasha turns 24 in a couple of weeks' time. He's 11th trying 25 matches this year, averaging close to one every two matches, and that could be an important one as Liechtenstein misses the conversion. 10-0 Uruguay, three minutes of the half left. Amasha, one of those guys with a question mark against his name for the 15s World Cup. Yeah, he's played a good amount of 15s for... Los Terros, a handful of caps as a centre or a winger in the 15 aside game. McCubbin just spilling that restart forward, so Tonga, first opportunity for some structured possession, albeit Atiele Pakalani still off the pitch for a few more seconds for at least one more phase of play. Coach! Fight! He's on his feet underneath this, ready Six. to go, desperate to get back on for his team. Semisi Maasi picks from the base, and this is Kairan Talmoy for Lao, the deadly Tongan strike threat. Ardao's chasing all the way, but Talmoy for Lao will score Tonga's first try of this London weekend. He is a flying machine. It's his 10th try in 12 World Series matches. Well, it's the young man, Tao Mufalau. Straight off the scrum, just takes it on. 19 years old, just thinks I'll go straight up the guts. And they love it. And all our Tongan fans watching, praying that this will be the first of many times we'll see them in this arena. Malolele to everyone in Tonga and everyone here supporting. Conversion attempts is wide, but it's a five-point game now. And for a future, this man has Kyron Dalmoy for Lao. Top Tongan try scorer in the Challenger Series. And in the World Series as well. So with the power play, five points apiece. And Tonga have kept that in quite magnificently until it just bounced forward the nose of that funny-shaped ball. And in fact, the officials have decreed that it went out on the full. Before a Tongan forearm slapped it back in, so free kick no. centre field. Why no? Stop screaming! <laughs> Stop screaming! Guillermo Liechtenstein admonished like an unruly toddler. What do you, want? If you don't say please, you can't take Come the quick tap. If he does that again, I'm going to penalise him. Well, we're seeing nothing but tight I mean, score lines in this playoff. Here mini tournament going on so far it's heart in the mouth stuff all the way through Uruguay a few seconds to go before the end of the half and they really want to just put a bit more distance on the scoreboard against this dangerous Tongan side last play of the half can Uruguay strike again not with handling like that and that will be the end of the first seven minutes. It's been tense, it's been a bit topsy-turvy, and right now this playoff pool match is hanging in the balance. Uruguay 10, Tonga 5. Well, what a game it was just a few minutes ago between Canada, Kenya and Canada, I beg your pardon. We can get a little chat with the Canadian captain, Phil Berner, who's speaking to Ricky. Phil, a really tough start in a really tense situation. What do you make of where you're at, where things need to go from here? Yeah, I think obviously you need a few big wins here, uh, but maybe start a bit, bit nervy, on edge, uh, falling off tackles, which you can't do against Kenya. So, yeah, we'll, we'll build from here two more games still, so we're not out. To say it's such a tense and, and stressful situation for everyone. What do you say to the guys? How do you pick up again and keep going? And as you say, not out of it yet. Yeah, same as the uh, on-field communications. Just next job. Uh, so we'll get our recovery in in the next couple hours, and then next job uh, against Uruguay. Well, all the very best for that one. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you.
DJ Hask, readying for action, preparing to entertain the Twickenham punters on the decks, rather than at the breakdown this time around, and already attracting quite a few early afternoon revellers here in London. Meanwhile, serious business Contact. of playoff rugby, Uruguay leading Tonga 10-5, Ardao off the quick tap, and you don't want to take a blind pass into a Tongan sledgehammer like that as Felipe Arcos Perez feels to make sure all his internal organs are still where they should be. Arcos Perez just wearing one there. Crouch. Chance for Tonga early in the second half of this scrum. Two sides to attack. Six. The danger man, Tamu Falao on this side. And that's where it's coming, Maasi feeds. And a big bustling run from those Tongan players. Dupo off the deck, lovely step. Tongo Tea straight down the middle. Splashes under the sticks. And the kick will edge Tonga into the leads. And that's what it means. Oh yes, twinkle toes from Tonga Tea. Look at that, he's a big man, but he's light on his feet. Gliding over the Tuckenham turf. Rodney Tongotea tries scorer against Stand Great off. Britain in Hamilton, has now scored in Great Britain against Uruguay. And the kick from John Ika is successful. Uruguay 10, Tonga 12. I'm so glad you didn't ask me to pick the results of these games, Jamie, before we started, because I've got no idea. It's been fascinating, hasn't it? Canada were so good in Toulouse, semi-finalists, lost the bronze medal match to France. They were beaten, and beaten well in the end, by rampant Kenya team, 24-19. How's that for a restart? That's delicious. And Tonga are finding their groove. Until... You need to put down the ball before you can stand up. Tackle completed. Sione Tupo yep. got a little bit carried away and a little bit exuberant. Well, no fear. Going for that little sneaky restart. And that's what it's going to take in this tournament. You can't be holding anything back. You've got to put it all out there. And I just wonder whether these Tongan lads coming in here, buoyant, off winning the, winning the Challenger Series and earning their spot. They're in the hunt, they're in the chase. And whether that puts you in a better mindset, Slightly less fear, perhaps, of dropping out of the top like the other three teams. Yeah, it functions for Uruguay through McCubbin. Ardao to Liechtenstein, Arcos Perez, Amaja shoveled it on and shoveled it forwards. Thomas blitz defence, doing its job. That's another great read, coming off the edge and making that spot tackle that we've seen two now. Really difficult to time that well. They've executed it wonderfully. Yeah. Uruguay just probably to pull themselves yes. a little bit off the line no. with those passes, give themselves a little bit more depth, because there's a guy that never held anything back. He played right on the line and was pretty much untouchable in his time. Billy Wiz. We're going to be hearing from him in a, a few hours' time. A chat sideline with the great Jason Robinson, who dazzled this place for so many years. World Cup winner in 2003. And enjoying the Set. gastronomic delights of his old stomping ground today. Can Tonga stretch this lead? Four minutes till the end. On goes Talmoy Folau, round the outside, kicking ahead. Kyron Talmoy Folau, it's well tracked and dealt with by Brazionis. That's lovely rugby. Brazionis, great cover. What a bit of skill. Time off. Again from the young man, Torma Number Folau. seven. Round the outside Number and then seven. just stuck it on the toe. A rare glimpse of a 22 restart. Not something you see a lot of in sevens. 
An interesting one because Uruguay will want to maintain possession here rather than bang it long, but there we go. Off they go, down the park, on cue. Curse of the commentator, Tom. <laughs> However, the long restart might work out for them. Tom will have it back, though. And this is John Ika, who shows a clean pair of heels. Ika heading for the corner and bashed into touch mercilessly by the covering Diego Ardao. The skipper lays his body on the line for Los Terros. Well, he threw everything into this tackle. And you have to, to stop this man. Whoa, wow, what commitment from Ardao against the big man, John Ika. Do you know, he is, he's big by circumference, but short in stature. Five foot six, John Ika. He's low to the ground. He looks horrible to try and tackle. You've almost got to have your nose on the turf to get low enough to hit him legally. Well, that was a good exocet impression from Diego Ardao. And Uruguay looked to exit cleanly. Three minutes to pull this one from the fire. Two-point ball game. And Uruguay must try and build from deep. It's not a bad start from Arcos Perez. This is Facciolo, scored against the All Black Sevens in Toulouse last week. Amasha now down the touchline. Awesome left foot step. Tamoy Folau with a tap tackle. Oh, that's naughty. Donga offside. And that could be viewed as offside. cynical by AJ Jacobs. Sione Tupo just slowing down that ball. Stopping the attack. Penalty Uruguay. Well, that's not the worst yeah. tactic from Tupo. If it was to try and disrupt the Uruguayan attack. Time off. Number it's two. the tap tackle. You don't normally necessarily go for that because you want to keep defenders on feet, especially if you've got other guys to work with. But on that occasion, he nearly dropped the Uruguayan hey. attacker at the feet of one of his fellow Tongan defenders, ready for the jackal. It was almost perfect. Interesting dynamic this for Uruguay as well. They played against Set. Kenya and Canada in Toulouse just last weekend, beat the Shuja Pride, lost to the Maple Leafs. To take on Tonga this season. And a little fumble on the deck means Tonga will have the ball back, two minutes left. And Sione Tupo looks absolutely wrecked, so he's going to be coming off. A little worse for wear. I think it's John Tapuelo Willow who's replaced him up front. Off the back of this, a bit of a human nutmeg. Straight through the legs. Cut! And carries on. Do it any way you Fight. can in this game. Set! <laughs> A little bit loose for John Ika. It's gone forwards. And Uruguay have it back. They'll have the put into the scrum. And they'll have a golden chance to try and turn the tables. Well, we just saw Sione Tupo coming off there, looking very tired and Sometimes the excitement, the adrenaline can really fatigue you, both physically but also mentally. Staying in it in these moments Fine. is key. Tonga just coming up with an error there, giving Uruguay a chance. Can Uruguay pounce? Can they find the ruthless touch? What a tackle that is. Flying across John Ika. Here's Basso stepping back on the gas. Masha. Little show and go, but he's running into heavy traffic. And Joshua Tuipolotu has the tackle. Basso. There's Echeverri. Another Uruguayan penalty. No. On the mark. Final 30 seconds. Here we go. 20 year old Kyron Talmoifolau leading the defensive Captain. efforts Scrum. for the Ikali Tahi. Uruguay have chosen the scrum. The source of so many of their tries on the series this year. Can they come up with one more precious five pointer as the clock ticks into the red? Uruguay, World Cut. Series experience all year this year. Can Fight. they make that pay now? Sit. It's tense, all right. Kenya v Canada went down to the wire. Uruguay Tonga does likewise. No knock on at the base. Alvarez has it. Uruguay, 22 metres out, Bautista Basso. Gang tackled by red, scarlet-clad Tongans. 
Ardao cuts back inside. Can the captain spark something? Braziones, Paso. Here it is for Facciolo. Amasha! If he scores, it is immense. Yep, chicken try or no try. If he hasn't, it's one of the best cover tackles you'll ever see. Oh, yeah. wow. Thank you for the decision. Yes, you may want to try. Thank you. Air Amasha. <laughs> Winning try, Uruguay. And already, even at this early stage of the playoff, that is a hammer blow struck to the Tongans. And a mighty step forward for Los Terros as they set about trying to preserve their coronation status. The conversion from out wide fades across the face, but it is Uruguay's victory. It's another heart-stopping pool match, and this is the try that settled it. Baltazar Amasha, second of the match. It's an incredible finish in the corner, feet in the air, ball on the deck, virtually unassailable. And look at what it means to the Uruguayan fans, to Amasha, to Basso, jumping for joy. And Los Terros prevail.